Let's talk about modeling. Modeling change, that is. Now that we've been introduced to the concept of a state, the next step is to discuss x prime, the rate of change of the state x with respect to time. Keep in mind that time is the independent or input variable, and x is the dependent or output variable. Now even though x is changing in time, the funny thing is its rate of change does not usually even depend on time. This is known as autonomous equations. What does autonomous mean? The definition says, having the freedom to govern itself or control its own affairs. Hmm, that's exactly what these equations are doing. These equations are determining where their own fate goes simply as a function of the current state and not as a function of what time it is. So let's take a look at some change equations. The general form for change equations for one dimension will come in the form of x prime is equal to some function of x. Note that the change in x is dependent on x or some function of x and it does not depend on time. You do not see the independent variable t mentioned at all in this functional equation. Let's look at some classic examples of change equations. Probably the simplest form of a change equation would be to let f of x equal to some constant. Some examples of this are x prime is equal to positive 2 and x prime is equal to negative 3. In both of these examples, the rate of change is constant. Does that sound familiar at all? Do you know any functions whose rates of change are always a constant? That's right, linear functions. And it turns out that the statement that x prime is equal to 2 leads to a model that behaves linearly. The value of the state x will always be going up by 2. So it'll go 2, 4, 6, 8. Or it'll always be adding 2 depending on where you started from. In a case like this, this would be a linear model with a negative slope. So let's say that we started with the value of x is equal to 12. It would go down by 3 for every time step. So it would go 12, 9, 6, 3, 0. And it might even go negative 3, negative 6, and continue going down forever and ever, depending on the domain of your state x. The thing to note is that if f of x is a constant, like in these examples, there's actually no feedback. X is not looking at what its current state is in determination of how fast or slow it should change. It just does this constant same amount of change every single time. Again, that's tied to linear behavior. So the next simplest example after that would be to consider rates of change that are proportional to X itself. Examples of this are X prime is equal to 2X and X prime is equal to minus 3X. I kind of made these examples similar to the constant example, but hopefully you can see the difference. The difference here is that this is just equal to a constant number 2, and this is equal to 2 multiplied by x, and that's why it's called proportional to x. So what kind of things happen when we start getting this feedback into play, where x is not only considering its change as a constant, but some constant multiplied by the current value of the state? This is our first instance of feedback, and what it leads to is exponential growth or decay. The general form of this type of equation, where f of x is proportional to x itself, is going to be x prime is equal to ax. When x is, oh sorry, when a is greater than zero, so when the constant out in front, like this two, is greater than zero, that's an example of positive feedback, and that's going to lead to exponential growth. Note that the rate of change of x is always equal to 2 times how many there are right now. If a is something that's less than 0, that's when we're going to get negative feedback, and that's going to lead to exponential decay. For example, when x prime is equal to minus 3x, x will be going down by minus 3 times how many x there are, and that's going to lead to an eventual decay of the system. So our two most classic families of functions from pre-calculus, the linear function and the exponential function, show themselves again in our two most basic examples of change equations, where the change is either constant or proportional to x. Isn't that nice? 